So this is Fancher Davich Park. I think I'm saying that correctly. And I've done a few videos here before, but uh, I've never actually talked during them. So I'm gonna walk around this park real quick and uh, give you a little description of what, what this park is about. And uh, that's pretty much it. So this is the main pavilion, which is right next to the main parking lot. This is where I usually park my car when I come walking here. And uh, let's walk over to the main trail. As you can see, the lake, you could call that a lake, it's more like a big pond, is mostly frozen. Uh, even though today, which is December 30th, 2022, it's actually 60 degrees. Um, we had a few days of very cold temperatures, which caused the lake to freeze over. As I said, Fancher Davich Park. So this is the main entrance to the trails. This is also the entrance to the pool area, which is closed at the moment. In that area back there, which you probably can't see from here, Normally would be sprinklers and things for kids to be playing around in. I'm going to try not to talk too much. Only mention things here and there when it's needed. Afternoon. This little path here was added recently. It connects to another path that goes from that part of the street over there and around this dangerous little uh, curve here then comes back out the other way. I'm assuming they did it because mm, There's no other place to walk if you're walking along the street. There's no sidewalks. It's kind of dangerous um, The park does close at dusk, so I don't know if you would get in trouble Walking through there at night to avoid being in the street um, There's barely any there's barely anything happening around here anyway, so I don't think anyone would really bother with you. Now, here you have a bit of a fork in the road. To the right, it goes a little off-road. It's uh, mostly gravel, and that's going to be the major trail part. And to the left is going to be a paved part that goes towards the, well, also towards the, the lake area. 
and that's all paved. For now, we're gonna go through the part that's not. And of course, today of all days, someone is doing construction, doing some kind of work on their house. It is also mid-afternoon, so there will be a bit of traffic going around. Um, people coming out of work, people coming from school, assuming they had school. Um, usually earlier in the morning, later in the afternoon, much quieter. Today's probably, or at this time, is probably the most busy. And if we're lucky, we might see some wildlife. So far, all I'm seeing are deers. a deer and I can hear a kid screaming in the background <clears throat> I can't tell if you can see the deer from that distance there's actually two in the back right between this these, this row of trees I think there's a family behind me playing what do they call that Disc golf, it's the one with the frisbee. There's a course in this park. I uh, don't see that being used too often, but it is there for anyone interested. Seems all the snow and ice that was on this path has melted. So now there's a lot of mud. So I'm sure you're hearing those sounds. Now this isn't a very large park. Um, I think it's one of the bigger parks in the area, which, in case I didn't mention, this is in Middletown, New York. But it does have a nice little system of trails, and if you use it correctly, you can maximize the distance walked. In the summertime, those houses in the distance are pretty much invisible you, you, they're hidden you can't see them uh, but now that it's winter where the leaves have fallen all the the brush has died down now it's very clear the backyard pretty much just stretches into the park which uh, if it was me I, I think I would build a fence but uh, it is what it is people people do what they want Forgive me if I'm breathing hard. Unfortunately, I am not in the best of shape. And uh, this microphone on this camera pretty much picks up everything. So if you're hearing that, my apologies. I'm currently using a gimbal with this action camera 
and it seems that the calibration is off so I actually have to hold the gimbal at a slight tilt in order for this to stay straight in the middle it's just something I'm gonna have to fix later on now this is another fork in the little trail you can go straight you can go right or you can go left if you go left it's gonna take you back to that paved area that's gonna be hugging the lake now if you go straight through here at the end you're gonna get into another fork where it's also gonna go into the paved area but it's also going to give you the opportunity to swing back and actually come through this path now I find if you want to maximize the distance walking you would go to the right loop around back down this middle then go to the left and then you can walk around the lake normally if you're walking at a brisk pace you can do this less than 30 minutes I would say you can walk around this entire area Normally, you would see chipmunks just running around. Haven't seen one yet. Seen plenty of squirrels, but no chipmunks. Maybe they hibernate. I don't know. And depending on the time of day, you can actually see quite a lot of deer. Um, usually, just before the sun goes down or early morning. Now there's an example of one of those uh, disc golf, it says disc catcher. Let's get a little closer so you can see it. In summer, when all this is overgrown, it's actually a lot harder to find it. And you notice that there's a bit of a path that they outlined with well, fallen branches. So in the summertime, when this is overgrown, people are able to actually still find this. Um, <clears throat> I've never played it myself. I have no real interest in it. In my opinion, this park is by far much nicer in the summertime. Even early spring, like late fall, it's amazing. But right now, it just looks dead, unfortunately. Now clearly, clearly this is a road. I don't know where it goes. I am not going to take the chance of actually going over there. You can see that there's tracks. Probably uh, city workers. Okay. My gimbal is acting up, it's not recentering.
But as long as it keeps the footage stable, that's really all I care about. Now this is the first time that I'm doing one of these videos where I talk and I have no idea what the audio is going to sound like. I do also have a backup microphone that I purchased recently. It's one of those cheap ones from Amazon. Uh, basically it's going to record audio to my phone and then if the audio from the camera isn't any good or at the very least if the separate microphone audio is better I'll just try to sync it to the video which isn't the easiest thing for me to do I don't have a lot of experience with that but uh we'll see how this turns out I will mention when I edit the video whether or not I used the original audio or the backup microphone You can't tell from the video, but in the distance back there, um, it pretty much just dips down into a valley. Um, there's another lake, well, wetland, not really a lake, it's more like a swamp. Um, there is a trail, a, a more rugged off-road trail that goes through there. The last time I tried to go through, um, it seems they haven't kept up with it, so you you lose the trail very quickly um, I do believe they're going to also add new trails to that area um, the heritage trail is expected to actually be extended up to this point so it's going to kind of merge into this they are building a football field and a park an, an addition to the park um, actually behind this area and supposedly it's going to connect all these trails i say that because the last time i saw a a report or a story about it was in 2018 when they were supposed to start and they didn't actually start building that field until i believe 2020 or 2021 um, so they're a bit delayed don't know how long it's going to take um, they have been doing some work on the football field part I don't know it's, it's still not open so I don't know how far along they're gonna be uh, when it's gonna be completed it would be nice to have a much longer uh, trail system in this area because I, I, I don't live too far and I do like to visit this area a lot and it would also be really nice if they can connect the heritage trail or at least extend it up to this point now this is the well this is where city workers they, they keep their equipment uh, now as i was saying before you have this paved trail which we could have actually accessed at the very beginning of the park if we had just stayed on the paved trail um, and in the distance, which you may or may not see, is the lake. And this just is one big loop. But if you want to, again, maximize your walking, well, we came from this area. Now we can loop back into this area. And this is going to take us back to that little fork in the road that we came across earlier. Another thing about winter, sounds are louder. If you knew that already, great. If you didn't, that sounds kind of weird. But with all the trees barren, they don't really work as a cushion um, to kind of, or as a barrier for sound. So things like that plane that's flying up ahead, overhead, um, it's gonna be a lot louder than it normally would be. 
And at the same time, you're missing all of the wildlife sounds, the birds, the uh, little critters running around in the leaves. This park is known for being uh, a bit of a bird sanctuary. So bird watchers come uh, fairly often and you can see all kinds of different birds. You can hear all kinds of different birds. And if you know anything about that, you'd be able to identify them. I know in the summertime, there is a blue heron, I believe, or maybe a few that make a nest by the lake. There's, uh, I've seen hawks, I've seen other birds of prey in this area. Now they have done a good job at cleaning up fallen trees because when I came here a few months ago there were trees or large branches uh, completely blocking these paths. So at least they've done a good job in removing those. And now we are back at that original fork in the road. We came from that direction and then we went that way, came around came through here and now we can go through this path which will leave us on that paved road but we're not going to walk through that paved road just yet Since we're here, let me show you this real quick. So if you know anything about this golf, you know what that is. Um, I believe they use that basically to navigate as to where they're going to once they've actually uh, reached each each hole, I'm assuming that's what you call them, um, if it's anything like golf. And now we're back on the paved road. That in the distance is the little garage that I showed you earlier. We made our little loop through there. Came back around and came out through here. Now again, you can either walk back to the parking lot that way, take a shortcut. That's the pool in the background. There's a lake over there. You can walk along this path and then pretty much exit the park at the next street and then continue to walk along the lake if you choose or you could do something else you can walk along here 
and then actually cut back into the lake. There's a little bit of a trail so that you can walk along the lake. That's usually what I do, again, to maximize the distance that I can walk in this park. This park is pretty popular for people walking their dogs, um, just people walking in general. But other than that, it's not something that's too crazy, too hectic. Um, you're not going to hear a lot of kids running around um, doing kid stuff. Now this is the part that I was talking about where if you walk through here you can actually get a good view of the lake and actually walk around it. There is another trail going in this direction. I'm not going to go through that way. Um, now if I wanted to do several loops what I would have done was actually walked through that paved area, around the lake, all the way around the lake, and then there's actually a path here that I could cut into, then come through here, and then walk around the lake again on this side. Um, I'm not going to do that this time, but I will show you, hopefully the sun isn't too aggressive. Now. Usually in the summertime, there will be nests along this area. Um, various birds like to nest there. I have no idea what kind of bird, if that's even a bird that's making that noise, if you can hear it in the distance. And this nice little bridge here. And this is just runoff that enters the lake. Now again, you have options. You could have, we could have come from that side and just bypassed the bridge and all that area to walk through here. From my understanding, they do allow fishing, but it's catch and release only. Don't know if they actually enforce the whole fishing permit thing. Um, there are fish in there. I know that much. I've seen too many people fish in there and catch little, you know, different types of fish. Throw them back. There are also snakes. I believe it's called a an eastern rat snake. I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, I did see one uh, when I first moved here. Very large one, and it was so large that I thought it must have been somebody's pet. Maybe it got out because I did not know that snakes of that size can actually live in this climate. Apparently, this is this is their uh, habitat, and I know there's a. A breeding population because I've seen smaller ones, smaller versions of that same snake. Uh, usually in the summertime, you see them. This is the lake, and if I was willing to wait here long enough, you could actually get a very good view of the sunset. But then, of course, immediately you would have to exit the park because, again, it closes at dusk. And I don't know if they actually patrol. This is another little path that's going to lead us around the lake and back into that paved area. Or we could just hug the lake.
to mention that they do fish in this pond, this lake. Visibility is zero. It is not a very clear water uh, lake. It's very murky. You really can't see more than like an inch or two from the surface. Um, Now these little corrals are actually used every so often for horse shows. Um, there's a bit of a club that comes over and does that. They do little competitions, they show off. Um, this area is also used around July, end of June, to do fireworks shows so they do a free fireworks show every year and it gets fairly crowded um, nothing to the standards of like New York City um, but it's nice you can you just come in if you get here early enough you get a good parking if not then you have to kind of hunt for parking um, and you just grab a spot and wait for the show it usually lasts about I'd say about 15 minutes I have actually a video recording one of those shows. It's not, again, it's not to the standards that you would find uh, like with Macy's, but it is a free show and it's fairly decent. There are benches, such as this one, scattered around, so you can sit and just relax. little paved sidewalk that's also fairly new along with these little trees here and this is technically well I suppose this is the exit for the park there may be another one further down not sure. That's another parking lot over there. Um, towards the back behind that mound in the distance is that area that I mentioned earlier, which is basically a swamp. Um, and again, supposedly they will connect all these new trails to that area. But for now, it's kind of off limits. sidewalk area, this bench, and this over here, this uh, memorial. It's all fairly new, I believe in the last year or two. And as you can see, this is a bit of a, a path that's used a lot by people. I think you can see that it's kind of dug out here.
Now, my understanding is, if they do extend the Heritage Trail, they expect it to stretch along here. So right behind this row of trees is the old uh, railroad where they would put the trail. But I haven't heard anything about that yet. The last point that they stopped was East Main Street. I've done a video about that. And it would only be, I don't know, maybe, if you're from the city, it would be just a few blocks, really, away from here. So it wouldn't be too much trouble to extend it, at least from my perspective. Um, whether they have the budget, that's a different story. And this is the overflow, so to keep the lake from flooding the rest of the area, when it reaches a certain height, water comes out through here, and then it goes through that little pipe. I have no idea where it goes after that. There may be a creek around here that it exits into or feeds into. mentioned earlier that I had when I first moved here I saw a very large uh, rat snake I took a picture and I looked online to confirm what it was and I believe I saw it somewhere along these rocks now I believe that this is technically the exit to the park now there's no fence to close from what I can tell but I believe that this is both the entrance and the exit to the park for vehicles anyway and I do know that once it gets dark the, the police do come and patrol this part. They'll drive down this road, go to that extended parking lot, pretty much kick out anybody that shouldn't be there. You can use your imagination as to what they might be doing that they shouldn't be doing. This is another parking area. Now, in the back is a, an apartment complex with their own private parking. But during the time when they do the fireworks, they tend to close this part off and they don't allow anyone to park in this area. That's the baseball field, and behind that is the playground, which they just made new, I think this year, the start of this year, they took, they ripped out uh, a good portion of the old playground, and they put a new one. 
they do play softball and I don't know if they play baseball, but I know they play softball during the summer. And we're just about done with our little walk around this park. It's taking a little bit longer because I was stopping to talk and show things. But if you if you walk at a good pace and you're not embarrassed about huffing and puffing and sounding like you're gonna die, you can do it in less than 30 minutes. These little islands, kind of cool. That's all I can say about that. There's one there, one in the distance back there. And if you look on a map, it shows that there should be one more, but I don't know where it is. And we're back at the main pavilion. Well, in the distance. Now you can continue walking along this lake. And at some point it looks like you can't go further, but if you continue to walk, you see that there is a, a small cut path. And it does continue around the lake and it reaches back to that bridge that we had crossed. I'm not gonna do that because this video is at this point already over 40 minutes. And I don't know if I'm going to edit it down or if I'm just going to leave it like this. Now these pavilions are for public use, but you have to reserve them in advance. And I believe there is a fee. Um, I never needed to use them because I've never actually uh, done any kind of parties over here. But that's what it's for. They do have little barbecue pits along with them. That is Fancher Davich Park. Now I'm going to stop this video here and then I'm going to resume recording and I'm actually going to walk along this park into the street and I'm going to head to another park called Maple Hill Park. I'm going to record that but I'll leave that as a separate video. And uh, if you're still here, thank you. And uh, I appreciate you watching the video. And I hope you come back again. Until then, take care.